All right, here we are at our 2020 Chaparral 277 SSX bow rider sport boat for sale. We're here near the beautiful fresh waters at Douglas Lake, Tennessee today. We're actually just about surrounded by it, but um, it is working its way down to winter pool. So you're seeing a lot of shoreline back there, a little bit less water than what you would typically see. Uh, but this is a one owner boat. It has been used here locally on the fresh waters of Douglas Lake. If you're not familiar, Douglas is just east of Knoxville, Tennessee, a little bit southeast of Knoxville, Tennessee, near Interstate 40. And we're here for our video walkthrough tour as usual. This one is powered by a, a uh, 6.2 liter Mercruiser DTS. That stands for D Digital Throttle and Shift. Um, 350 horsepower catalyst inboard outboard stern drive engine with a Bravo 3 dual prop stern drive and about 63 engine hours on it this is sitting on a, a boatmate tandem axle trailer with dual brakes that is included with this we've also got a swing tongue on it as well this boat is very well equipped. We're here for our video walkthrough as, as usual. Get a full walk around of the exterior, interior. Go over all the um, highlights on it. And then we're going to get up close with any wear and tear that we noticed on it. And there will be a direct link down in the video description. Here's that uh, swing tongue on our trailer up here that is a two inch ball uh, but down in the video description it's gonna be a direct link to the photo slideshow page of this one at our website that's also where you're gonna find the full list of features options current asking price all of our contact information and and all that good stuff so for your convenience again that direct link is going to be down in the video description uh, if you're watching this on a device where you're not able to get into that video description, our website address is www.yournewboat.com. And once you make it there, you're going to see that orange lettering. Look for that Find Your New Boat button in the top left-hand corner. When you click that, it's going to load all of our inventory and order price. And all you got to do is scroll down until you get to, um, get to this one again, the 2020 Chaparral 277 SSX Sport Boat. Again, that trailer is included a closer look at that trailer we've got the dual disc brakes uh you've got a set of uh i think the front tires are 2019s the, the back are 2020s uh this boat uh was actually um was uh started being built in 2019 um but it is a 2020 model got some nice docking lights up there on the bow as well as a windless anchor we're gonna get to all that here in a few this is a biscayne blue uh, color with alloy gray accents and you can see that in the interior and the exterior so that that stripe there is an alloy gray stripe with the biscayne blue coloring got a collapsible tower with a integrated pivot top here's that bravo 3 dual prop on drive and we're going to use a four-step swim boarding ladder right here. That's going to come right down. It's a little folding area for it. We've got about eight stainless steel cleats on this one. Nice, good-sized cleats. Um, I think six of those are pull-up cleats. Um, and this right here would be the other two. This one has that optional extended swim platform. Of course, we've got trim tabs as well. There is a small little uh, ski toe hook right here, um, integrated into this ski toe bar. And that's going to be where you're going to want to pull any, any towables. Skiers and wakeboarders, you're going to be able to pull off your, your tower up here. And before I leave this nice extended swim platform, I'll pause right here show you uh, of course you got the 277 uh, stainless steel uh, decaling right there you've got a trim switch right here for that outdrive trim um, 
is very convenient to have this where you can access it um, from off the boat uh, whether you're doing any maintenance work with it on the trailer or putting it away for your winter storage uh, if you've got the boat covered up you don't have to climb inside and use the tilt trim switch on the throttle this right here is going to be your waste tank pump out we've got a uh, integrated head compartment with a vacuum flush tecma head very nice or actually it's a tecma head not a vacuum flush uh, tecma is is uh, known as being one of the uh, more top of the line heads I'd put it up there right there with the vacuum flush head uh, we've got two fuel fills um, and that's gonna one on either side your uh, starboard side and your port that I showed you first there that's gonna allow you to fill this up um, no matter what side of the gas pumps you you pull up to whether that's whenever you're on the trailer or or in the water um, now you see this little sticker there for no e15 it's best practice to not run any ethanol period in in these uh, boats now the newer newer engines are uh, made to be able to handle um, e10 or ethanol at a 10 percent range but is not good for the uh, for the engines or the fuel delivery system so it is best to avoid when you can uh, underneath this seat right here which is on a hinge which I, I do love that we've got access to our dual batteries right there those are 2019 batteries both 24 marine star batteries and then our sun deck right here this large engine cover or also becomes a nice rear-facing sun lounge and a forward or rear-facing bench seat and all, all you do is raise and lower that you've got that little grab handle right there so that's where you've got the forward or rear-facing uh, we've got a little transom door right here and i always appreciate having that little cutout right there um, in which you can walk in and out easily from the swim platform into the cockpit of the boat without having to step on your seats nobody needs to, to do any more added wear and tear than the seats and that then they're gonna have from just traditional use now right here is going to be a um, a little handheld pull out shower a little bit of a tight squeeze in there wrong way that's gonna pull out and uh, there is an onboard fresh water tank uh, this is always more difficult one-handed sure if I have my other hand free I'd already have it out of there by now let me spin it here real quick possibly there we go. Okay. there's that little push button right there now, I believe this uh, water system has been one of course water pumps also is, is not turned on Okay, now before I close our little walkthrough transom door right here, let me raise this hatch here for you right here. It's gonna be your battery switch. Um, you do have those dual batteries, which we just showed you, and then the ability to to, do, um, to use either battery one, battery two, or both. Uh, both's gonna be for like emergency jump start. Um, we do encourage you to operate on either battery one or battery two, and then of course go to the off position when you're not using the boat. And that's gonna make sure that your batteries stay fresh. Do not fail you and of course whenever also make sure whenever you do anchor for a little while if you're in the water floating around with your stereo on again you don't want to be on both batteries you want to be on either battery one or battery two it is good to uh to rotate uh, your usage between battery one and battery two uh, lots of ways to do that it really depends on your boating habits if you're a weekend boater and you're always boat, boating um, two days of the week, use battery one on, on the first day you're out, battery two the second. If you're able to get out multiple days um, throughout the summer, then um, a good way to um, switch back and forth is on odd number days, you use battery one, even number days, you use battery two. Um, but that, uh, again, a lot of that's going to depend on just your typical boating hab habits. All right, so that's that nice walkthrough. We've got this snap-in uh, beach weave, snap-in flooring, and of course that uh, that uh, kind of glued down mat flooring back there in the swim deck, and that little bit of walkthrough right there. Uh, circling around, call your attention. We've got a little integrated igloo cooler. I believe that's about a 36 quart igloo cooler. That comes out for easy 
floating or even uh, bring them back to the swim platform when you are having one of those days in a, in a cove. Again, that um, tailor-made bimini top. JL Audio tower speakers. We've got six JL Audio cockpit speakers. Uh, four here behind the windshield, two more up in the bow. And then you've also got the two tower speakers. That's going to make eight in total. And then we've got a nice subwoofer right here behind your driver's seat. Uh, driver and passenger seats are both going to swivel as well as slide back and forth. I love the hardware on these. Um, these are very easy to operate. You can slide that around. This uh, right here is going to allow you to slide the seat forward or back. And again, the ability to, uh, to swivel that with just pulling that, uh, that little adjustment there. We've got the um, flip-up bolster driver and passenger seats. Upholstery in all of our seats all appear to be in good shape. Um, and again, that's going to do the exact same over here in your passenger seat. Be able to rotate side to side as well as slide back and forth and raise and lower that that bolster that with the raised bolster uh probably not gonna need to dig that uh seat cushion out and sit on it's gonna give you a nice view over top of your windshield even when you've got uh passengers up there in the bow now this one is yacht certified um so there is a formula to figure out exactly how many people you can have on board um you can also go by the weight uh but um essentially using the formula yacht certified it's going to give you the ability to have uh 15 passengers on board here um nine stainless steel cup holders throughout there's one of those right there to driver's seat and also you'll hopefully you'll notice this easy access to your clarion stereo unit now this is an am fm auxiliary input bluetooth satellite ready noaa weather band stereo if you're not familiar with the noaa weather band stereo I will show you here right quick. So there's your FM, there's your AM, and here's your weather band. This. Now you're probably going to recognize that voice there. That's the NOAA weather radio um, that uh, provides all your thunderstorm alerts, things like that. So you've got the you've got that, and again you got the Sirius XM satellite ready. Um, and then your auxiliary and Bluetooth inputs as well. So go ahead and turn that off right now. We have function test at this. All your speakers work just fine. Uh, and then while we're here, uh, we've also got two USB inputs. This one right here is going to be the auxiliary input for that um, stereo. So you got your two USB 12 volt outlets right there. Two more over here by your passenger seat. Um, so that's going to be able to keep up to four devices charged. Got small little. Phone holder right here, device holder right here, as well as another just uh, 12 volt uh, outlet right there. So, so that make that five outlets you're going to be able to keep charged. You got a nice tilt steering wheel um, here at your driver's seat. We've got Lenco trim cabs with the trim tab indicator gauge. Uh, you do not always see these indicator gauges. You can see these are in um, the bow down position right now. And as you move these, that little light is going to change. So you can easily see exactly where the, where the um, placement of those trim tabs. Um, now, you don't so much use these to take um, you know, the bow up or down on takeoff. Your, your uh, stern drive trim is going to be right here in your throttle. That's going to do the, the majority of your uh, bow raise and lower. But with these Linco hydraulic trim tabs, uh, think of those as your boat levelers. So if you do have, if you get this cooler weighted down and you happen to have, um, you know, more passengers sitting maybe on the starboard side than the port side, you just touch those uh, Lin Linco trim tabs and just level that rod right out. Now, when you are leveling that, make sure you are going straight. Um, if you're in a turn at all, the boat's going to have a little bit of a bank to it. So you're not going to get... Um, a, a proper level um, once you do straighten back out. So you want to make those adjustments when you are straight. Um, right here is going to be your uh, um, your mechanism for raising and lowering our tower. It is powered, um, so it's going to do all that heavy lifting for you. And again, you can be able to take that forward and then back up to the full upright position. Um, while we're here, Let's see, it's a great little way to show you 
Here's your little tow hook right here. Slide the camera right through there. This could be your tow hook and your anchor light. Hopefully you can see that. Probably need to be back a little bit farther. There you have it right there. Uh, we also function test all of your navigation lights. We've got our courtesy lights on right now. You've got a nice little kind of a blue accent light uh, throughout. You, you're going to see it um, here on your speakers. Some of these speakers are lit. Uh, so that's off. That's back on. And then another one right there. You've got those throughout. Uh, we've got those lights turned on. I'm actually going to turn this bilge light on as well. Again, we function test everything on here. Docking lights work great. Uh, I've got LED docking lights right here. Um, as well as your windless anchor, that functioned just fine. Uh, horn and your blower and your bilge also all function just fine. Now here at your dash, now these screens look like they're flashing and, and uh, the screens do that. Screens and televisions, they do that um, in our digital cameras. And um, so I promise you they're not in real life. Um, they're nice and steady, but uh, you've got the two uh, Garmin touchscreens up here um, that are integrated and you've got all of your your engine um, information data is basically equipped with SmartCraft uh, so you're gonna have like diagnost ability um, and other um, neat features like that on here as well as a fuel flow meter uh, right here's your gallons per hour so as you are running that's gonna show you your your real-time fuel consumption rate um, and this I love this feature because it often it, it you can make a, a, a relatively small adjustment in your RPMs and not really change your um, overall speed a whole lot but make um, major differences in your uh, your your fuel burn rate so I love having that um, at the helm I've also got GPS speed of course your fuel tank there's a 80 gallon fuel tank on board so roughly this one's roughly got about 40 gallons um, your engine temperature, um, that's going to be your trim on your uh, drive trim right there. Here's your engine oil pressure. And, oh, that's your that's your engine uh, temperature, water temp uh, gauge right there. So you basically got everything right here. You can customize these layouts. You can pick different ones. Um, you've got a compass uh, reading on your tachometer right here. Um, and, of course, you've got your, your analog speed gauge as well as a digital readout right there. There's those engine hours, 62.6 engine hours. Um, and then you've also got the uh, digital readouts on your battery bolts and your coolant temp. We've had this battery going for for, um, for a little while here while we were running everything, testing all the equipment, everything like that. So we have dropped that voltage down just a little bit. Now over here um, to the port side, we've got our, uh, just a combo screen here on, this is your GPS chart plotter and your sonar. Uh, depth and fish finder over here. Obviously, we're out of the water, so you're not going to see a depth reading right here, but uh, this is going to show your depth here, your depth here. Uh, you've also got GPS speed right here. You've got the ability to zoom in and zoom out here on this chart plotter right here as well, um, so you can navigate your, your path around the lake. They've, they've been uh, kind of doing their, keeping track of their uh, uh, trips out there on the water, so that's where that black and uh, white kind of dotted lines come in there. You can, you can go in there and clear all that out. And just have a clear view of the water as well so i uh, believe you can sometimes even uh um, well now i'm messing things up here let's go back to the vessel there we are that's back to the vessel right there you could probably even customize this as well so you can have a larger chart plotter screen and a smaller um, sonar as well so we're going to leave those courtesy lights on until we're done here. Um, before we head up to the bow, let's step over here to your passenger seat. I already showed you how that's also going to swivel. You've got the flip-up bolster um, as well. You've got a nice little dry box right here. And then just behind this is going to be your enclosed head compartment. Um, and that's where you've got that Tecma head. Uh, you've got a no, little uh, stainless sink right there. You've got a port window, toilet paper holder. Um, and we've got that little LED light on as well. So, love these head compartments. Hey, when you've got a Tecma head or even a vacuum flush head, that's made to be used. Don't, don't feel like you're, you know, you're, all, all these uh, marine heads can be cleaned. Um, you should use it. Um, honestly, I encourage you to, to, to use your head. Um, let your guests use your head. If you've got your spouse with you, your kids with you, let them use it. Um, now, that is a Mass Raider head. 
it can handle tissue in small quantities but if you are going to allow tissue uh, to go through the head um, you don't want any feminine products down there and you want the uh, RV or marine tissue because it's going to break down in that waste holding tank. Also use use uh, use some uh, odor loss or other holding tank uh, treatments as well to uh, to make sure you don't have any odors. Um, if you're using that there's, there's really no harm in using it. Always always kind of find them using you know when, when we're listening about people haven't used their head um, you know these these are one of the nicer heads don't hesitate to use that um, you know it's a nice feature to have uh, your spouse and your, your kids will enjoy that you'll love it too because that, that can uh, go a long way in extending some of your time out in the water so absolutely by all means let them use it it means you get a little bit longer time out there on the water in my opinion it's well worth it there's also going to be a screen for that little port window right there of course that's in the closed position right now oh, and then you get a little latch over here as well where you can kind of keep that keep that closed drought and some rougher water of course this big 277 sx um it's going to handle that rougher water nicely now then before we go through our uh, little walk through windshield right here I want to show you we've got this little integrated wind block i love those that are on the hinge right there so much easier than trying to put um your wind block down a little track or even doing the uh, kind of the the two uh doors that kind of swing open uh, it doesn't get any simpler or easier than that right there um nice little uh, storage area here under our driver's helm is also where you've got your jo audio amplifier that's of course the uh the brains for that little clarion unit and you got some of your uh your helm um, components that are going to be accessible from back here as well and this is just being used as storage right here uh, but again you also got that little light area as well uh, fire extinguishers mounted down here on a bracket which I love to see if you got a fire extinguisher in your boat hope you have a fire extinguisher in your boat but uh, make sure you use the mount uh, those can be very dangerous when they're not in that bracket that comes with it and make sure everybody knows where that is um, here's your first aid kits also good piece of equipment to have on your boat as well now let's go ahead and pull that wind block back over let it close um, this is a nice little feature right here so when you the um, what do you call this your your windshield catch um, you've got this little lever here so you don't have to do both of those you do one that's going to do the other and then as this opens up we've got a nice little catch right there you're going to see it's a little bit magnetic see it right there and that's going to kind of hold in place uh, now when you are underway you do want that windshield closed um, um, especially if you're out in some rougher water you know smoother smoother water if you're going easy with it um, you know you're fine that catch is, is going to hold um, but that your uh, your windshield's going to be holding up a lot a lot better if you do have it in the closed position especially anytime you're under rough water um, here's our bow seating right here i love these little integrated armrests that uh, go up and down very easily just lift it up and you got a little catch right here and squeeze that it's going to lower um, we've got two cup holders up here uh, one right there there's another speaker i think i mentioned those earlier and then over here on your port side bow seat you got another stainless steel cup holder and a GAO audio speaker. Nice uh, seating up here. Now we also have the optional bow filler cushion up here. That's going to to go right in this spot right here. We're going to have some photos of that um, at the website. Got that nice, um, essentially, uh, color match bow filler cushion. Goes in this area here, makes this whole area a nice large sun pad. Uh, kids love it. Um, spouses probably love it if they if 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 they uh, if they're fans of uh, laying in the sun. If not, you do have that bimini top overhead on that uh, tower. Um, I also love these bow seats up here on this hinge. Again, uh, that allows you to use one hand to open it. So you can use that same hand to grab things out or both, and then you can close it. Um, I, I do appreciate those features. Those are some of the little details that we notice um, in all the different boat models we see storage under these as well you've got that little matting right there as well uh, this right here this is actually for uh, that bow filler cushion you got two of those those kind of lay in place bow, bow filler cushion sits on top again we will have photos of that over our website um, you've got a removable center cushion right there love this because then you can step on there if you need to go off your bow or um, even if you just just need access to your anchor up here um, here's your raw nav lights. Again, we have function tested those. Uh, those are on a little swivel right there. Um, and here's this Lumar um, windless anchor. 
can raise and lower. Of course, we got the safety catch on right here. And you can pull that right back up. That's just using these pedestals right here. You've also got controls for that there at your driver's helm. Love those windless anchors. I think those are well worth um, an investment to be added um, on your equipment as well. A little bit of a, a little bit of a little stress crack right there where that snap is. Uh, did not notice that when we were taking photos, so wanted to wanted to show you that now, so I didn't forget. A little integrated um, self-draining cooler right here at your bow that's underneath this little removable bow seat. And of course, this also snaps into place. So anytime you are running down the lake, um, you do want to snap this. Um, I should probably also more important to snap all four of those or remove it all together anytime you're trying, especially if you're going down the interstate. Now then, let's turn around here, looking right back. Let's pause just a minute here, give you another good look at that tower. There's that anchor light overhead. Uh, we showed you the head compartment. And go ahead and close this windshield behind me as I walk through. Um, and there is a um, cockpit and a bow snap cover included with this one. Um, and then let me spin this seat. I'm going to show you this nice large in-floor storage compartment. Okay, you got the other little uh, mat down there. This is that uh, bow filler cushion. I love that it's got a, uh, a place to, to be stowed away when you're not using it. It's even got a little cover for it. You can see that uh, the vinyl on there. You got that white uh, with, the, with that Biscayne blue um, accents. And this is a nice large compartment all the way up there on the front. That's going to be your fresh water tank. That's for your uh, little transom shower, the little transom pull-out shower, as well as that sink in your head compartment. Um, and then this is a removable lounge table, two integrated stainless steel covers. Again, I love that there's a place for this. Um, this is going to be the mount for it. Kind of, kind of an interesting little mount, right? That is a... What these little brackets are for. We've got one of those in the bow, one right here. We've got photos of that table in place at both locations, um, so you can see that. I've been shaky enough with the camera. I'm not going to make it worse for you by trying to put those um, bow filler cushion in that removable table in place. But uh, that will go right here. It kind of fills in this area right here. Um, and then up here in the front, it's going to fill that area as well whenever you don't have uh, that bow filler cushion in place. Nice lighted accents over here um, on the side. You've got that JL Audio speaker. You got these little grab bars right here. Um, stainless cup holder on each side, as well as that JL Audio speaker. And then the seat right here, also on the hinge. Raise that right up. And then we've got a little um, 12 volt air compressor down here. This is for your inflatables. Again, it's got the little. Uh, harness to be stowed when you're not using it. It's going to lift right out of there. Inflate or deflate with that. And right here, that's uh, to plug that in to that 12 volt outlet as well. So, great option if you've got kids with, with tubes. Inflate those and um, store them away when you're out on the water, not having to go into a dock uh, to do that. Uh, two more of those uh, cup holders right there. I think I've shown you all of those uh, non-stainless steel cup holders now. And, of course, if you include that um, removable lounge table, uh, that's going to give you loving. Here's your grab bar right here for the engine compartment. Do you have a little bit of an assist raising that up? Well, you got that gas shock right there. Now, watch this arm right here. That's going to lock that into place. So if you are doing any work down here, make sure you lock that. Uh, before you start uh, reaching down into there. There's those two batteries as well. There's that eight gallon waste holding tank or 80 gallon plastic fuel tank right here. Um, and then here's this big 6.2 liter Merc Cruiser, 350 horsepower. This is the, um, oh, the catalyst um, or exhaust. Um, and again, 62.6 inch now. So we're going to go ahead and round that up. We're going to call it 63. Um, and again, it's all been used in fresh water. There's your bilge 
bilge pump with your automatic float switch right there as well. Of course, with those um, those big uh, covers, not a whole lot to see on there, but uh, there's your blower vent. Kind of see it's a uh, fairly clean engine compartment. And engine, engine really looks like it's seen a little use, in my opinion. Now we're going to go ahead and lower this down. There we go. That's just a little bit of dirt right there, just making sure that wasn't a stress crack. Um, oh, all right, on the interior here, up here, let me show you our uh, tower speakers here real quick. Showed you that canvas earlier. That's all in good shape. Um, about the only wear and tear I notice here in the interior, you've got some scuffs on this vinyl seat. Um, they're not scratches, they're scuffs. Um, maybe even just stains. Um, you got a little bit of maybe wear on this seam right here. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this really looks to be in good shape. I'm going to make sure I'm not missing anything over here. Yeah, I th think your vinyl's in good shape here. Um, honestly, we had a little bit of rain coming down earlier. I think that's, I don't think that's going to hang around at Mount Granite. Not exactly using a good cleaning product right here, but I, I don't think that's going to hang around. I think those just need a little little touch of product, um, and those two little marks are going to come right out. Probably going to be the same right here. Yep, actually, that's already coming out right there. That was just a little rub on there, and that's probably just a little bit of dirt as well. So... Um, And maybe a little bit of dirt right there. But um, yeah, I, I think it's safe to say um, interior here is in great shape uh, with the exception of those little uh, stains right there. We turn our courtesy lights off and actually I'm gonna go ahead and turn off our dash display as well. And let's head over to that swim boarding ladder and let's finish things up here on the exterior we're going to get up close and personal here on the exterior one more reminder visit it, visit us at our website for the full list of options features all those specifications there will be a direct link down in the video description and we do keep our website up to date so when you do make it over there to the website you're going to see if this is still available of course uh, we're also going to move this from the current listings playlist to the sold boat playlist once it is sold. Um, and of course the title will also be changed to reflect as well. Let's let's uh, pop down here below the deck here. Let's take a good look at this Bravo 3 uh, dual prop out drive. Um, your bellows look to be in great shape. Of course that's expected with 20, 20 model boat. Uh, we do have a little bit of wear, mostly on this front prop. Um, so this is that dual prop. We get a little bit of wear and tear on this prop now in my opinion uh, This can be remanufactured and I would almost guarantee that it's going to look brand new again That's what the prop shops are great at um, No need to actually put a new set of props on here uh, because that can be reconditioned just fine um, the the back prop is probably needs a little less attention but if you're gonna have that front one remanufactured I would take them both uh, because when that one is done it's gonna be all shiny looking brand new and you'll you'll wish you took that second one as well so a um, little bit of a of some wear right here on the bottom of this skeg on this out drive um, that's that's nothing that's going to concern me not one bit uh, but it is important to call those items to your attention. Now, popping right back here um, at this swim platform here. Let's let's we're gonna finish right here on this corner. We're gonna start over here. Do have um, some like minor scratches and scuffs in this fiberglass platform right here. And we've got some photos of these now because of this blue coloring. In my opinion. 
uh, some of these little marks look a lot worse than they actually are uh, because once it kind of gets through that outer layer of that blue gel coat um, it's just gonna it's just gonna show a whole lot more so a bit of a few marks in there there's another one there a little bit right here a little bit of wear on this rub rail right here um, now some of these little water spots right here are going to go away and uh, when we were taking photos there's a little stink bug right there um, like that mark right there like that's not even catching well it's barely catching an edge of my fingernail that's that but that is that's a minor scratch in that gel coat um, and just barely catches my finger's edge. Um, some of these water spots might end up looking like a mark, um, but that's just because it was sprinkling on us a little bit earlier. A uh, few little of those uh, kind of surface scratches right along that line right there. Uh, maybe a little bit around, around that bilge drain right there. Um, and this one was also just wax. So right there, so those little spots that kind of look like a mark was rubbed right off. That was actually a little bit of wax residue right there uh, from where this one was just detailed. Now I'm gonna come down. Um, of course I showed you these little scratches right here. You got a few more on this. This is kind of like a little fiberglass shell um, that is there um, basically all for looks. That, that's just kind of to, to make a nice little line for the swim, the extended swim platform that comes out. And this is what I mean. So that's basically, um, that is kind of through bolted um, through the hull. But this is like that little shell that just accompanies that extended swim platform. Now down here near, near kind of this, this edge, we do have just some very minor wear marks. See that right in there? You've got some of that going on. Oh, that's interesting. This is maybe a uh, bilge drain. They've got a little, like a little rubber baffle in there to keep probably uh, critters from crawling inside. Um, all right. Pan back again here. We got a small little mark. Or is that wax? Nope, that was wax. Um, all right, we're going to go up this side right here. Let's, let's start, let's start down low. Um, and again, we're gonna have we're gonna have a lot of photos of this, and and again, um, I, I would probably judge a lot of this by the video more so than the photos because a lot of this stuff's gonna look worse in the photos. Now the video you're gonna kind of see as the as your angle moves as 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 the direction which the light is hitting it kind of moves around. Um, some of these old marks are are gonna very easily disappear. So. Oh, here we are. See, actually, I'm starting to even lose sight of some of these. Some of these little minor scratches right in here. And, of course, the camera's probably going to try to focus on that gravel in there. See it right in there? As that camera moves along. Just some minor little scratches um, in a few areas right here. This is, this is like some minor dock rash right in here. Um, now, up here, ab above our little uh, gray accent line we've got some more in this area right here we got a little bit in this area right here watch those areas as the camera moves by okay as we continue up one here some more down through here another one right here another now this one's this one's a little worse. This one you can kind of see when you do step away. Um, in fact, yeah, some of those, as you get up closer, some of these are, are a little bit more prevalent. You know, this this area right through here, this mark, and then you got that one, and then this one right here. That's probably the most prevalent on this side. Um, again, some more right in through here. That one, um, maybe a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit right in here, very light. Yeah, that looked like a little bit of wax residue right there.
Now, dropping down below, we did notice some areas kind of down here at your water line. So again, some minor little gel coat marks right along this whole edge. A few more right in here. Kind of some minor scratching in there. Bear with me here. I'm going to move down a little bit lower. See, we got some more of that right in there. Okay. And then we do have some of that minor scratching going up near that bunk. Uh, now, you, if you've been a regular watcher of our video tours, we do like to remind you, when you are loading onto the trailer, make sure you take your trailer all the way deep so that all of your bunks are under the water. Then pull forward uh, to, the, uh, to the typical height uh, for loading the boat. Typically, now it depends on a little bit on the ramp and the angle of your ramp, typically... You want that uh, kind of front fender kind of right there, um, you know, at the water line, maybe a little bit out just a little bit. Um, that's going to vary a little bit on the ramp and, and the boat. Um, once you load them a few times, you're going to kind of figure that out. But careful on going too deep because that's when you're going to end up with some marks up here on the bow uh, from hitting maybe your trailer tongue or something like that. So um, it's much easier to kind of get uh, straight on the trailer. Uh, with with the trailer maybe not deep enough and then once you are on there straight um, sometimes you can even hook that uh, that bow hook um, and, and and keep pressure on it while you while you take the trailer the rest of the way down or even applying a little bit of pressure uh, with your throttle to kind of keep that boat from from moving back down with with that so I think we we were showing you that whenever I got sidetracked and gave you the give you the trailer load tip um, a few more marks on this oh sorry about the camera bump there a little bit of a little bit of a crack in your gel coat right there um that probably needs to be if you're going to leave this in the water this needs attention um if you're going to keep the boat on a lift or the trailer uh, just keep an eye on this because some of that gel coat might start uh kind of flaking off um in time but um if it's in the water this this right here this little crack in that gel coat that needs attention a little bit of wear kind of following that trend on down and that's just going to be some dirt right there. So maybe another small little minor scuff in there. And here's here's two more of those little little gel coat scratches. All right, go ahead and pull the camera out from there, and then kind of right here at this edge, just another one of those kind of right there on that edge. You got a little bit of wear. Well, just below it now some of that's going to be dirt where it just didn't get a good clean so i'm not going to get too worried about a lot of that but just some minor little scratches right there um, on that whole edge all right let's step over to the other side i do love these big stainless steel bow plates right here that's gonna that's gonna kind of ward off if you if you do pull in um, you know, a little bit too hot to, to a dock or something like that, or even the trailer. That's going to give you a little bit of protection right there, but it's also kind of a small footprint right there. So, um, you do want to use caution, uh, loading on the trailer. You don't want that trailer down too deep. Much easier to pull forward than coming in and bumping right up into that trailer. I'm not seeing a whole lot on this bow edge going down. Well, probably got a better view of the camera than I do right now. I'm seeing a few more of those little minor marks kind of coming off from there. And we've got we've got an area right here that appears to have been repaired. Um, and I guess they they did a repair to the gel coat right here. Um, and they did not have the um, uh, what do we call that earlier? Uh, they did not have the right shade of blue um, in gel coat. There has been a little bit of a gel coat shorter, so I'm not surprised. But that's that's definitely an area that's been repaired. Um, and I, I mean, honestly, to me, I don't mind it being a mismatched color right here. That's below the water line. Only time you're seeing that is is on the trailer. Um, a little bit of those, again, kind of minor marks right there on that bunk. Um, you know, that from a distance that looks kind of bad. That's typical. Um, and I really don't see any of it being um, considerably deep, or at least not concerning. And it's nice that this this was obviously a little bit bigger of a mark that was repaired. A few more of those marks kind of right there on that same little 
the same little um, edge and right along there. All right. I think that's I think that's probably get all the items of concern below the water line. So let me pull them back. Again, you get a few more of these kind of right there at that hole edge. Um, just a little bit of wear right in there. And then let me step back so we can kind of see these other, other those areas in the gel coat. Oh, here's one. Oh, do I need this angle? There it is. Not quite as pronounced as some of the others. Here's just another small one. Of course, that's the uh, that's that port um, ha uh, light or window from that head compartment. Um, there's a few others right here, right in there. Little one right there. You've got a little bit of an oxidation line right here. This is probably the water line on the boat. A little bit, a little bit oxidized. There's a few more of these little marks right here at that edge. And a couple more back here again, right along that edge where you got some of those right here. That one right there. All right, let's let me go back. Make sure we didn't miss anything. Okay, yeah, I thought I remembered seeing some of those similar kind of dark rash marks. Let's see if I can find those again. Yeah, so here we are. There's one. There's a few others right in here. Then we got some light ones in here. there so again as soon as you pull back those kind of disappear as you get closer when the light hits it just right they are there um, and that's that's kind of just some some minor. I would call that minor uh, dock rash uh, the dock rash is when you get those lines kind of go up and down um, where this brushed against a dock um, you know, these, these um, horizontal ones is probably when the boat was uh, going forward or reverse. Up and down ones is probably just where it did not have the fender in the right spot. Caught, just caught an edge of something, just rubbing up and down a little bit slightly. Uh, now, right here, talked about this kind of fiberglass panel over here. Kind of uh, makes a nice little line with this swim platform right here. Now, we do have some... Um, some marks we started i think right in here so we kind of had some more of those typical marks coming across right in there some of those right here on this corner another little one there that's definitely dock rash here and then here's some these are a little bit more pronounced marks right here now these aren't going to go away now uh, if this really bothers you you want this to look new again you can do some gel coat repairs here um and make sure they um, they get their gel coat from Chaparral, or at least color match that with Chaparral. Now, on this little fiberglass accent piece right here, we've got a little bit of a stress crack right in here. Now, being that this is kind of a cosmetic piece right here, again, this is just kind of a shell, um, that, that does not alarm me one bit. And let's see, we showed you these, showed you a little bit of that oxidation line right in there. Um, we have anything else under here? You see a little bit of a drain um, mark right there from the water draining out that bilge. I think that's, I think that's probably covered it here. Um, 
going to be some transferable warranty on this. It is a 2020. Um, that we will have at our website. And I believe we got everything. Yeah, we started we start right back in here. We start with that out drive, then popped up to here and did the full walk around. Um, a bit of a stick in there. So that's that's going to start to wrap things up. Again, this is the 2020 Chaparral 277 SSX sport boat large bow rod this is a great boat if you're in a uh, if you are a weekend warrior if you've got to be out on the lake when everybody else is this is a great option for you because it's going to handle that water very well at this 27 feet it's a heavier boat um we'll have the dry weight the dry weight of this one at our website uh, again with all those other uh, full uh, specifications and details options the warranty information and all that stuff it's all going to be at our website uh, direct link again is going to be down in that video description it's there for your convenience and we do like to remind you um, when you do make it over to our website we don't monitor youtube comment page so when you do make it there at the website you can contact us in one of three ways you can reach us by phone by text or by email we do like to remind you, if you call us on the phone, you get our voicemail, and you do want to return a phone call, please be sure you leave us a detailed message. Let us know which list you're looking at, what questions you have. We are very frequently in areas without cell phone reception. So if you don't leave a message, we will not know that you called. Um, you can also send us a text message. Again, our contact number is going to be there at the website when you make it over there uh, to look at the listing. And you can also send us an email. Uh, keep in mind, when you send us an email... If you do not receive a reply within one business day, check your spam folder. We're very quick about getting email replies out to everybody. Um, and we, we um, as long as it's a business day, unless it's one of those days where we've been in uh, without cell phone reception all day, you're almost always going to get a reply back uh, within within uh, 24 hours. Usually it's much less than that. I'd, I'd say on average we're probably a uh, four to six hour response rate on email. Uh, typically a little bit quicker on text. So whatever is most convenient for you, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, if you do want a phone call just and you get our voicemail, just make sure you leave us a message. And um, as we conclude, there's going to be two things kind of coming up on your screen as we wrap up. Uh, top left-hand corner is going to be a shortcut to go to our current listings playlist. If you do not wish to leave YouTube and you're trying to see what else we have in our inventory, you're going to want to visit our current listings playlist. You can also get to it by going to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash your new boat. And in the top right hand corner is going to be a shortcut to subscribe to our email list if you are um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, not our email list. We do have an email list sign up at our website, but if you only want to be notified when a new listing post, um, subscribing to our YouTube channel is a great way to do that because anytime a new video post, uh, which means a new listing post, you're going to get notified. And all you got to do is click that click that subscribe link right there if you haven't already. But thank you again for joining us. Again, this is the 2020 Chaparral 277 SSX sport boat for sale here near the beautiful freshwaters of Douglas Lake, Tennessee. And I thank you again for joining us.